this little talk is about how a structure in the mind is made. Uh, structures are buildings. You build castles in the air. You build structures of ideas uh, in the, the, the method of programming that's used on the public. It sometimes takes generations to build a structure, an idea. George Bush Sr. referred to this as the big idea when he talked about a, a new world order coming into view. Part of that was true. It was the end of, of a so-called Cold War system and the beginning of the next world empire that takes over. Uh, which I've been mean, discussed in many books, mainly in Britain, for as far back as the 70s. But a big idea is a Masonic term. Um, it's not just a vision, it's a big idea. And of course, like all big ideas, you must first plant the seed. Before you can plant the seed, you've got to get the soil ready. And the seed will then germinate in the soil. That's called the preparatory work. The technique that's used on the public is as old as can be, old as mankind himself. And you'll find in Plato's Republic, where he talks about a, the ideal world utopian society run by a dominant minority called the Guardians, that they used all of the techniques of culture creation and culture creation is done by drama primarily and symbolism paintings, architecture it puts ideas across to people and in drama the onlookers actually emulate what they see uh, the acting societies prefer to say they reflect society but amongst themselves they admit they help create culture alter culture and direct culture that's the job of the culture creators and again going back to Plato he also talked about music and that music was what such a powerful powerful force for directing the minds of the young this technique has never been used to its full effect as it is today. It was so powerful that Plato actually talked about licensing musicians because of the effect it could have on the youth. And he knew that too because he had followed uh, Socrates. Socrates had to drink the hemlock because Socrates was secretly teaching the youth, the aristocratic youth uh, into the mysteries and he was teaching them that one day they could rebel and bring in a new type of utopian order the same as Pythagoras had done long before so people basically are downloaded by entertainment into the ways that they will adopt and behave with ideas uh, music, fashion, everything goes together to create culture. Uh, poetry, of course, was big in the 1800s. And then radio and television took over big time from then. If you want to plant ideas uh, in a psychological warfare scenario to disengage the public from a reality you do it again through fiction through the process of fascinating fiction and then you take it into a realm of a twilight zone between fiction and reality by mixing the two together so bits of truth with fantasy white speculation and then you build on it, you build the structure, you build the, the, the concept within someone's mind. The builders, the master builders, 
that's what they mean by that. And it's done over many years. An idea can take many years and even some generations to fulfill. Hollywood is the holy wood. It's also the real holly, the holly tree, the bush that, that, that you take the rod from, that the magicians always use. You wave the magic wand like little the little um, Disney character does, and the stars fall from the wand. You cast a spell. And people are under the illusion. Uh, they're in entertainment. Tin is t- like tin. It means cover. You enter under the cover into the tent of darkness, and then the light is shown, and you are mesmerized. Today, we're going through amazing changes, amazing changes, with aerial spraying all over the world uh, until people are getting used to it. Uh, Some people can remember what clouds look like, some cannot. And those who have never looked up before, well, once you point it out to them, they have nothing to compare it to. They think it's always been like that but we're being dozed like bugs from the air on a, an increasing basis. They've stepped it up big time since people started to notice. So they're hurrying up the process. Meanwhile, uh, even on this website here, there are hundreds of emails coming in from people who are following Anunnaki, uh, reptilian people, Uh, the UFOs and space aliens behind it and all this stuff has been put out over generations where where they were inundated with science fiction and authors specially chosen authors high Masonic connections to mesmerize the public and and prepare their minds for this counterintelligence Uh, process because the time comes during every great plan where enough people are awakened to the plan the the time always comes when a critical moment and a balance is reached and those who implement the changes to come must counter it that's called counterintelligence you take the intelligence which has been gathered by the small people and you put out superstars to take that intelligence. They are pushed to the very top. They become the leaders. And then they spin it off into outer space. They diffuse it. They, they negate it. They render it harmless, you see. And that's what counterintelligence does. How did we get to a a stage where so many adults in all walks of life and professions and jobs are so confused that they're chasing Anunnaki and, and reptilian people? How did this happen? How long did it take to prepare the people's minds to bring them to this stage? In the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church brought in all of the superstitions and fears and ancient terrors of the unconscious mind. The stage, the rising sea of the unconscious, the place where all things can happen and are repressed and kept apart by the subconscious from the conscious mind. The raging sea where everything can happen where people will do and see and experience things they would never ever have in their conscious state that's what dreams are made of and nightmares it's the creative source where things are pulled from and they're rendered harmless once they reach the conscious stage but to those who understand the forms of mind control 
keep whole populations terrified, docile, and obedient, and confused. The unconscious mind is a tremendous field of study. And those who brought religion into the world and Europe have all used these ancient techniques. And the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages have adorned all the ancient cathedrals with big, big money. And generations took to build up an ongoing plan which covered generations of stonemasons to build each cathedral. During plagues, famines, wars, and everything, this work kept going because it was a must-be by the real powers behind. And they adorned these cathedrals and all public offices with gargoyles. And the gargoyles were all of the ancient, ancient Middle Eastern terrors and fears which had been uh, dreamed up thousands of years before. Why change something which works? You never throw away something which works. And these gargoyles took the place or the, or the form of deformity, deformity. Our whole language to this is to do with forming. And they gave cripples, they gave they give us cripples who are stunted in growth, the dwarfs, uh, dwarfs with horns, dwarfs with tails, like lizards, and that, that was the beginning of your reptilian types, until ultimately old Nick or Satan took on the form of part man, part beast, with the, the familiar horns, um, long tail, and claws, and so on. Uh, something which is, was known to terrorize people and had been used thousands of years prior to the Middle Ages had been used by uh, the creators of even the Old Testament uh, which was written, remember, initially in the Greek language by priests who lived in Egypt study your history books And he had the, the stories of Lilith, you see. And, and you'll find even the, the caricatures of, of Lilith with the same uh, feet of eagle and uh, sometimes they would put a tail on her and, and wings and a demonic type creature. This was used to very, very good effect in ancient Babylon. And statues can still be uncovered today. And all, of course, the amulets to protect against the Delilah's character. So in the Middle Ages, they carried on the tradition in Europe and terrified the public who were illiterate, remember. An illiterate public who could not even read any holy book and who, uh, who had uh, this uh, theology dictated by priests in big churches and cathedrals, where it was all lit up inside it was bright where outside there was forest and darkness and all the terrors of the night which was your, your subconscious unconscious mind all, all the fears were left at the door you walked past the gargoyles and these lizards and, and, and uh, terrifying beings and, and you were inside the place of refuge where nothing could touch you how did we get to, to the Anunnaki today? One of the, the biggest Masonic, high, high Freemasonic writers put out to initiate uh, uh, Masonic stories to the, to the public, casting spells over the public, was Arthur C. Clarke, who did 2001 Space Odyssey and 2010 back in the 1960s. But he's lesser known for bringing out a book called Childhood's End back in 1956. And in this book, 1956, Childhood's End, the world's invaded by all these flying creatures that come just one morning. And a man's worst nightmare has, has materialized by these flying reptilian creatures, you see, who force force 
a human population into obedience, deciding that was the only way to create a utopia. Those who run the world often refer to their goal as the creation of a, a utopia for themselves. Arthur Cleek C. Clark in that book prepared the way of the mind by preparing the soil for the idea of reptilians taking over from the old middle age type Catholic church this was followed up by other authors who came out uh, with their own particular particular take and professors would call it spin on decipherments of Sumerian tablets. Stating that, that uh, the Anunnaki came and, and uh, created two types of humans. One, one type was to rule over the lesser of the slaves. The type that was to rule over the slaves was to have more reptilian blood in them. And genes in them. In other words, creating an order, you see. An order is something that's meant not to be broken because it binds the mind. And so this author came out with his particular spin, and uh, mainly in the 90s. Prior to that, Enemy Mine had come out, the movie in 85 where a space nine crashes in some planet and he's at war with another race of people and who is the race of people? well they're reptilians and so this lonely space man finds his main enemy that he fights all over the planet is a reptilian who's also crashed there the reptilian has always in a high esoteric Understanding being a symbol of the opposite of the good nature within each individual. If the kingdom of heaven is in within you, then so is the kingdom of hell. And we can look around and we can always see which man and woman prefer to externalize. You have Enemy Mind coming out, followed up by uh, a Mr. Von Daniken, who in the 1970s came out with Chariots of the Gods. Chariots of the Gods. And all across the, the major newspapers in the world was this spiel, basically, on Mr. Daniken and how he'd found these ancient... Uh, rock carvings in South America of, of these uh, almost um, Indians almost uh, riding these solar spacecraft like motorbikes and, 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 and amongst the stars and little guys with uh, bubbles in their head like a spaceman and all this kind of stuff and no one stopped to think why would the major media be promoting this without question? When major books appear across the planet in major bookstores, the bookstores don't come looking for the book. It takes big, big bucks to promote any author out there into the mainstream permission is granted from above and Mr. Danikin's books sold like hotcakes because they were fascinating and little, little bits of old puzzles and old stories were rehashed and mixed in with, with the uh, chariots of the gods and has earth been visited before by spacemen and it's 
went on for quite a few years. He sold lots of books and followed them up in rapid succession, as these authors tend to do with their teams of writers. And one day, it was exposed, because one little journalist came out of Britain and went over to where he's supposed to have found these rock carvings. And he found a peasant who was paid a few pesos for each carving that he could carve out of rock. And Sir Danikin fell from his chariot and hit the dust. But you can't keep a good lie down, you see. And it was revived, as I say, with other authors and then enemy mine. And then a series broke out in 1984, I actually came out in 83, called V. V is five in the Roman numerals. This is again in part of the Masonic code, the, the, the fifth race they call it. Me one day I'll go into all of that. And V was a television series, big production for television, 19 episodes. And once again, the sky is full of spaceships one morning, and they're all over the world, and these quite beautiful creatures come out, very human looking. And it turns out underneath their little plastic skins, they're reptiles. Mm. Reptiles. I wonder if we get the idea of reptiles, and why it keeps popping up, you see. And that's how, that's how the seed is planted. Through disinformation, through big, big muses, muse, you muse an idea through fiction and repetition into the mind of the public. And that's how you build a pyramid in your mind. Prepare the soil, plant the seed, build on it generation by generation and the public will eventually be so bewildered and they'll believe it that you can spin them off in any direction and the more fascinating it is the more the people unfortunately like it I can remember telling someone back in the 70s that Mr. Danikin had fallen from grace and the guy was ready to attack me because he wanted so badly to believe in it all and people would rather kill the messenger than face the truth when they've swallowed a big lie today people cannot tell the difference between fact and fiction their minds are so spun with entertainment and in amongst entertainment, I include the media. It's supposed to give you what we call news. Your news today is half Hollywood, the Hollywood, the casting of the spell, and the stars they give us to follow, the wandering stars. And sport. Circuses, as Mr. Aldo Huxley said. Huxley said the reason the Roman Empire fell because the elite couldn't afford to keep giving the people enough bread and circuses. And that's what we have today while the new empire, the future, is underway. With all of its plans published for those people who can plow through the dry, non-entertaining books put out by the big boys themselves. There is no speculation involved. But there, there, there generally, there's no sex or, 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 or gory violence there. There's quiet violence because they talk about culling off big chunks of the population, but they do it in the nicest possible hygienic way. Alien and the Alien series with Sigourney Weaver was another series. Who's the bad one there? The terror out of her darkest dreams. Why, it's a, it's a sort of big, sort of reptilian-type creature. Boy, I wonder.
wonder where these ideas come from. Anunnaki, Anunnaki. And yet the decipherment put out by one man laid the foundation for this mountain in the imagination which has taken over the reality of so many people. As the, the, the skies are being sprayed with chemicals every day, they're asking, are the Anunnaki doing this? That's what they're asking. Anu, even in Egyptian, in an Egyptian book of the dead, is the spirit of the object or the door the guide that takes them through the underworld always was always will be and the spinners of reality into fantasy are backed by some very big agencies with a with a program and a plan to bring the public into a mental standstill. Because if you swallow the fact that they give you as fact that you're well, you're the bottom of the, the heap you see, you you're not of uh, you're you're made, your ancestors were made to be slaves. If you swallow that psychological warfare has put you under. The purpose of psychological warfare is to destroy a potential enemy before anything happens. That's the purpose of it. And if you believe that your ancestors were created by a bunch of walking crocodiles and you were made to be a slave and you can't be the superior ones because they have more Anunnaki genes in them than you do, then you've just admitted that the game's over for you, isn't it? And those people who are following all of this are the first ones to condemn and poo-poo all orthodox religions. And yet here they are, devouring the stuff as eagerly as any novice monk of the Middle Ages devoured the stuff that was dished out to him. We're going through the biggest changes that have happened, as Brzezinski said, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. In the Industrial Revolution, vast peoples were moved vast distances and off the land into these crowded cities that were thrown up as industrial towns and cities. Upheavals like you had never imagined as they got forced off their land through laws and various other means. And now, we're all getting ready to be numbered and stamped like cattle under the guise of some guy living in a cave in Afghanistan who threatened to say boo once too often. And we're going through this as a reality, and people are chasing walking crocodiles in their imagination what I'm saying is true and you all know it so don't kill the messenger think about it and one day when it's your turn when you're asked what did you do with your life and when you were asked, did you know what was happening? And you say, yeah. And what did you do? Nothing. Why should any creator 
or anything else that you want to believe in, why would it allow you to go on into anything else? Why? Part of that was true. It was the end of, of a so-called Cold War system and the beginning of the next world empire that takes over, uh, which have been discussed in many books, mainly in Britain, for as far back as the 70s. But a big idea is a Masonic term. Um, it's not just a vision. It's a big idea. And of course, like all big ideas, you must first plant the seed. Before you can plant the seed, you've got to get the soil ready. And the seed will end. This little talk is about how a structure in the mind is made. Uh, structures are buildings. You build castles in the air. You build structures of ideas uh, in the, the, the method of programming that's used on the public. It sometimes takes generations to build a structure, an idea. George Bush Sr. referred to this as the big idea when he talked about a, a new world order coming into view. This technique is never been used to its full effect as it is today. It is so powerful that Plato actually talked about licensing musicians because of the effect it could have on the youth. And he knew that too because he had followed uh, Socrates. Socrates had to drink the hemlock because Socrates was secretly teaching the youth, the aristocratic youth, uh, into the mysteries and he was teaching them that one day they could rebel and bring in a new type of utopian order. The same as Pythagoras had done long before, germinate in the soil. That's called the preparatory work. The technique that's used on the public is as old as can be, old as mankind himself. And you'll find in Plato's Republic, where he talks about a, the ideal world utopian society, run by a dominant minority called the Guardians, that they used all of the techniques of culture creation. And culture creation is done by drama, primarily, and symbolism, paintings, architecture. It puts ideas across to people. And in drama, the onlookers actually emulate what they see. Uh, the acting societies prefer to see they reflect society. But amongst themselves, they admit they help create culture, alter culture, and direct culture. That's the job of the culture creators. And again, going back to Plato, he also talked about music. And that music was what such a powerful, powerful force for directing the minds of the young. 